So there I was, editing a video on the historic run of the Oni Warriors, like a chump, while in the background, the Kings and the Ravens collectively decide to throw down in one of the straight up goofiest games I've ever seen. It was ridiculous, it was topsy-turvy, and, well, I won't spoil the end, but it's madness. So while I work on that longer video, enjoy this mess of a game. It might start a little slow, but I promise you the ending makes up for it. We'll have to see if the Camelot Kings can battle back, take us to game number three, and potentially fight for that first seed still, but they've got to get through game number two. To do that, we got to throw it over to David Trelli. We are on order division first seed point officially. The Highland Ravens steamroll the Camelot Kings in game one. If they win game two here, they retain first seed in the order division and a bye straight to masters did think it was an opportunity though for some gangs mm -hmm. still could be screams got blink oh he's going for it maybe just waiting for these backs to get channeled blink in alt wow and two tower shots but scream will walk away with first blood and he will walk away no death the highland ravens jungler on his tower dive hands 500 gold and a lead over to scream imagine this is just a trade that yeah the highland ravens are are, are fine with oh, Alex has lane pressure Alex has a knockup and Scream's got his second kill. The Highland Ravens have just shoved pressure on right. Now get a blue buff and a second kill for their jungle. Haddox shoved aside by Variety. Simply does not matter. And an ultimate out of Barracuda sets up another gank from Scream who's on a killing spree. And Variety has ult. But he's going to get into it. He's stunned and tossed aside. Meaning the entirety of the lead is essentially sitting in Baka's hands. Genetics has knocked up the Riptide. Yeah. Just not enough. Yeah, that feels and bad. And he's going to fall down. Probably smart from the Highland Ravens not to chase any further forward. Haddix. Haddix is in behind. King Arthur, level 13. This is a risky, really risky, high hopes type of play from Haddix. The Camelot King simply collapsed onto him. Well, everything has been going well for the Raven. Thought an overextension from Haddix, but that has opened up the door to a tier one tower in mid. Yeah, I don't even, I don't think the play call was ever, hey Haddix, can you dive here? I think he might have just decided to do it himself. Vera does not use his beads. Variety will use the ultimate, but already used Fearless, so not much chase potential Whoa. here. Unless the blink comes with oh, Captain the Twig. But the shell is great, the shell oh, is no. great, and the shell sends this fight right back. Right, but the only Fury should get confirmed by the Camelot Kings, it does. But for now, you've traded out Variety. Are you going to trade out the rest of your team? The River's Rebuke, Immaculate. And allowing the Camelot Kings to retreat from the fight. However, Screams got Blink and a couple autos for Big Man Tings. Haddix now rotates through as well and a second kill for the Highland Ravens in exchange for the Oni Fury. But it's going to get worse for the Kings. There's towers to be pushed. And Variety's going to have to be forced to ult out and Twig. Yeah, there's no tower here. Twig has beads. Is it going to matter though? The Kings get the Pyromancer in the meantime. They're gonna lose their jungler for the third time this game. The scream is gonna stick around just in case the cat. Haddix is behind still. Yeah, just in case the Camelot Kings decide to go in. Haddix is going deep here. And it looks like Bear pops the ultimate. That's the go key. Man, Haddix has just controlled the back line as well. And he hasn't taken that much damage. There was a teleport. That's how Haddix refreshed, got back into the fight. Variety loops forward, sends a couple against the wall. And it's actually Barracuda who dies off first. Scream leaps back over. Stuns. There's the shutdown. Oh, goodness. It's Yark and it's Big Man Tings with all the AOE in the jungle. And how has this happened? A double kill for Captain Twig. And the Kings have flipped the script. And they've dropped four members of the Ravens. Once again, we've been reset. But this time, it's the Kings bringing the lead into the next Fire Giant after a miraculous team fight. Seemingly out of nowhere after the way the rest of this game has gone. If the Ravens are here, uh -oh. it looks like Scream is going to get ulted here, but can so Genetic slow. catch him? No, he can't. Ult traded. Oh, Variety? Variety? Well, what is ha what? What Why happened was he to there? Variety? He was, th he was there all on his own after Scream was engaged on. Now Fire Giant at 25 minutes in the air. Fire Giant burns and Fire Giant taken by the Highland Ravens, but they have lost Haddix in the meantime. He nearly lost Twig. Barra. Barracuda dashes forward. What is happening here in game two? Genetic steps forward once again. Barra should live, though Yark with a bit more lockdown. Might be able to grab a kill. Big Man Tings dashes forward. Stun you, forgot about the Agni. And the Ravens get three FG buffs, a kill on a variety but lose their sides of the map. Looks oh. like blinking on a Captain Twig immediately melts through the shield. Gotta get the kill, gotta get the kill. Scream does, 
But there's a stun traded back by Variety. Lean, engage, disengage from the Highland Ravens over in mid. That is the go button for the Highland oh Ravens. My oh my goodness! It's right, Trelly. It's an initiation from Scream and Haddocks. And it's a kill onto genetics to start. But the silver lining for the Kings is somehow Twig and Variety don't die because that was swift and quick damage from the Ravens. And now it's a turnaround for fire. And the rest of the Ravens are going to get out of the Raiders Rebuke once again without using Phantom Shell. But Variety and Twig are trying to chase oh, this one oh, down. Oh, oh, Haddox is going to teleport back in, though. Haddox might flip the fight around. And in fact, maybe he has. He saved Hurrywind's life then. Taking poke. Oh, goodness. Big Man Tings has done enough. Barracuda stands, but he will fall. Mid lane Phoenix given over to Scream. That's the King's opportunity for a fight back, but Scream, who has just been a split push machine this game, adds another objective to his belt. It's both Phoenixes on this push. Fire Giant falls off anyway. Barracuda will be up in time for the next one. Kings, though, defending two Phoenixes down, one in mid and one in right. A couple steps out of base when it touches down, and the Camelot Kings are already finding position. Haddix, maybe he doesn't know where they're at. He doesn't have a phantom shell of his own. The team might have to get He'll over here to help here out. Yep, here they come. Core stepping forward. This might be the final fight of the game. If it's convincing one way or another, Haddix riptide it back. A tanky King Arthur doesn't matter. The Camelot Kings rotate through, grab a kill on the Haddocks right as Barracuda's respawning. Scream's going to just push in for the end. Yeah, I wonder if he is. You know the Camelot Kings, they're going to be... There's a ward down, I, I think... He hasn't crossed it yet. I think it was a Raven's ping on that ward, though. He avoided it, I so think. So he sidestepped it. Enhanced Fire Giant, left side Phoenix, all three Phoenixes down. One back being channeled by the Camelot Kings. Enhanced Fire Giant for the third Phoenix in the base is now the call. Camelot Kings may not just have the opportunity to push out. This may effectively stall out a lot of this Enhanced Fire Giant. It is very difficult to push in from this position. I mean, the Camelot Kings can try. They're going to go up mid. But all the Highland Ravens have to do is play as defensively as possible. And these minions will come in eventually. They have right and left side. They're already being pushed up, and the Kings are just, I mean, they're, they either try to win in one foul scream. swoop, or they're going to have to retreat, and already Scream said, I'm going for the end. Yeah, Scream, he'll walk in with his fire minions. Only minion waves on right will contest this Bakasura. They're quickly dealing with the minions that the Camelot Kings have. Backs being channeled. Captain Twig and Variety considering a back, backs. but the backs are stopped. And Scream, who's blinked into the base, and it's the Titan who gets taken down by Scream. But no, it doesn't. He has to leap away. One pack gets channeled. Three man stun on the other side of the fight. He's back for Scream. The he stayed around, and the Titan will not fall. Captain Twig keeps it alive. Oh my goodness. The fire minions would have gotten it done. But Scream nearly gets it, and he's kept. His base alive, I think, yes, mid lane Phoenix falls. But Haddix can teleport. The Kings, they've got everyone. Haddix could TP. There's not a ward close enough. He's not going to be no, able to go not. for it. But the left side Phoenix still getting siege. The Highland Ravens haven't been able to defend the rest of their base. Yep, still three Phoenixes down. Right side will spawn in here shortly, but that Phoenix is going to not be enough. That Titan is going to sit at low HP for such a long time. The Camelot Kings have to make sure all wards are gone or else Haddix can just blink in and end the game. One HP. Twig comes up massive for his team there. That Titan almost dropped just to some fire archers. I mean, if you're the Kings, you gotta, tr you have to meet them outside of your base, right? I mean, if you if you meet them in the Titan room, there's no one slippery enough on the Ravens to get in the right, base for free. It's not it. like it's a Janus or you know right. a, a, an Apollo. They have to blink past and try and make it in. And Genetics has so much displacement. Variety's so quick. He's got his ult, his blink. It is difficult to just go in for the end call. But it's <laughs> a scream, might <laughs> because of this map state. It should be a guaranteed EFG for the Ravens, unless, of course, the Camelot Kings just stall until that left side yeah, bird comes up. Yeah, but this is so up. risky because if Scream gets caught... Oh, if Scream gets caught, the game's over. It might be, and it might happen. The Scream has been spotted. Scream's got to know They're all coming. ...that everyone's starting to run at the jungler of the Highland Ravens. What do the Ravens do, though, in trade? They're starting to rotate yep. down past the Pyromancer. They gotta go. Can Scream just delay the rest of the game? A couple backs now being channeled. Three, in fact. So there will be defenders for the Camelot that Kings. That Phoenix is coming up soon. Scream screwing. jumps up and over. He blinks over the stun. And he'll send his ult down. Big Man Tings gets less than nothing as far as damage goes. Phoenix has And the rest yet. of the Ravens walking not into yet. the Titan room. The Phoenix will not respawn, but oh my oh god! god! The Camelot Kings have defended somehow! Scream 
is still here. He's got to go one last effort. He's got no relics. Unbelievable. A triple kill from the brink for Captain Twig. And we're going on to a game three. I cannot believe it. The Highland Ravens, they panicked. They didn't have the damage. They didn't have the CC immunity. And they end up falling. The Camelot Kings are going to siege forward, laughing all the way home, and take this one to a game oh three. God. When first seed was on the line, the Titan did not fall. That's right. It stands. One Titan does fall, and it's the one on the Ravens' side of the map. Call it 100, maybe less HP on the King's Titan, Trelly. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a near game end, a miraculous ultimate. The river's rebuke separates the fight, and the Ravens just were not able to put their damage on the low health Titan. Variety is stressed, my goodness. <laughs> Think about how the early portion of that game went for the Kings. Not good. I mean, they are getting run down. You're thinking Scream on this Bakasura is just going to run away with things. They needed that stop. <laughs> they needed their Titan to live, not once, but twice. And I got to give credit to Twig. He stopped it the first time. Yep. Comes in, gets a triple kill the second time. He says, hey, game's not over till the Titan dies, and ours didn't die. Game's not over. Phase is not over. Nope. Number one seed still not determined. Kings, Ravens, number one seed on the line. One final game left to play. Coming up next. So despite having what is genuinely one of the single biggest throws I have ever seen in 10 years of watching this stupid pro league, the Ravens actually managed to clutch out the series 2-1, which gave them a 7-3 record overall, which meant they finished the split top of their group. And that's a group which includes the reigning world champions in the Kings, and a team that includes not just Paul, but Baskin as well. Told you they'd start well. This team could be good. This team could be good. They have the potential, but there's just this nagging thought in the back of my mind that thinks in the first few weeks, these guys are going to look a bit lost, a bit asleep at the wheel. My gut instinct says this is going to be one of the weaker teams in the league.